Hello YouTube! Flashlight Enthusiast here. Today another comparison video and rather the review of the GT3. Uh, this is not the newest flashlight, mind you. It came to life around uh, the end of 2020, if I remember correctly, so almost a year ago when I'm recording this video. But uh, until now, I, I believe it does not have very popular uh, reviews and uh, basically reviews at all showing how powerful and amazing this construction, this particular flashlight is. So I decided to test this one and uh, after initial testing I came to the conclusion that actually this is hardly underestimated uh, production of the Lumintop. So guys stay with me if you're interested in this flashlight and I uh, would rather hear what I've got to say about this one. Stay with me. So here is the package. Uh, plain cardboard box uh, from Lumintop, nothing fancy here, but uh, inside there is a beast, alright? So let's just open the box and show you what comes here. Uh, I tested both versions, so both Narsil, the, the older one and the Unreal one, and I have got a comparison on the runtime graphs, so uh, I think something interesting for some of you. So we've got the manual with all the detailed instructions, if you don't know how to operate Narsil or Unreal you can check my tutorials. Here. So the flashlight comes well protected in this uh, foil. Sometimes it's hard to push it from the box, but basically, this is very well protected. Uh, the lumen top itself. This is a very nice little flashlight. Maybe not so little, but uh, quite compact for the power it produced. But apart from that, uh, we also get the tripod screw attached. Okay, to the flashlight itself, I removed it earlier. There's also the lanyard ring, which is also attached to the flashlight that I removed, because I don't use it, but you can actually attach here even a paracord, military style lanyard, so very nice. We also have double o-ring replacement, another o-ring replacement, and that's basically it. Alright, coming back to the flashlight itself, uh, the lanyard ring will be attached here between the tail cap and the body, uh, so it will protrude here and will be rotational, so very nice design overall. Looking at the flashlight, uh, definitely first coming to your mind is the quality, because everything is smooth, well finished, and uh, definitely you can feel the premium quality here, uh, as you may notice yourself probably. Uh, here is uh, luckily the Lumintop logo with the rabbit because there was some episode that Lumintop actually resigned from the logo and uh, uh, turn on logo will be appear on the switch which is uh, a little bit unfortunate for me as an enthusiast honestly the rabbit logo especially glowing one looks amazing and this is the distinguished sign between the Lumintop and other brands so uh, it's almost like a Lumintop mascot or something like that very nice and please don't resign from this one uh, here we've got the center of the flashlight, so orange blue reflectors, quite deep actually, will give you some throw, but uh, first things first, there are Cree XHP 70.2 LEDs, neutral white or cool white, I've got neutral white here, so producing over 18,000 lumens, very nice design, uh, reminding me of some uh, earlier constructions like Olight X7, X7R, uh, very uh, reminiscing, uh, especially with this blue bezel here, uh, and overall the uh, construction is, is very similar, but pumping out much more power, uh, and maybe, maybe in the UI is more interesting for some of you. So basically, uh, nothing to add here, let's remove the battery, the batteries to show you what we've got inside. Uh, everything works quite smooth here. So we've got uh, two pins designed, so two springs to uh, contacts, but to align that you've got rotationable uh, base with two plastic centering pins. Oh, very known design. And here we've got uh, four 18650 batteries. Uh, as you may notice, I use the flat top unprotected batteries. These are Samsung 30Qs, but you can also use the Samsung VTC6 or, or similar. That is because we've got some um, 
very short space for the batteries itself so the springs as you may see here are quite short and thick so you need very short batteries for for this one uh, so even a button top uh, unprotected won't work so you need definitely flat top unprotected batteries um, so for me it is definitely not a drawback but but bear, bear this in mind that you cannot use protected here um, I got some problems with uh, some of the protected Samsung 30Qs that actually uh, the contact was broken maybe because this uh, plus pole here on the battery is uh, is under the wrapping so maybe it does not make the contact with this ultra thin and uh, not very protruding brass contacts here on the positive end well I don't know but some batteries definitely work better than others uh, in this particular sample Samsung 30Qs tend to work quite well and Sony VT6 but on the other example uh, not really so just test your sample and check what batteries are best suitable for it waiting for a blink and we are good to go as you can see the rabbit started to glow very nice sign i like it already uh, so it uses the texas ace driver texas avenger uh, very known in, in the enthusiast community on the forum so very nice uh, driver without perfect stabilization but uh, who cares if it can deliver over 18,000 lumens from free XHP 70.2 LED so definitely driver is uh, designed for the top performance rather than stabilization but that's okay uh, it can run either Narcilam or Unreal in newer versions and uh, talking about Unreal I've got the second sample here this is the newer version with Unreal uh, so key difference is actually as you can see the size of the flashlight remain the same but they changed the reflector so basically what we can see here as you can see is the orange peel reflector is slightly different as you may see the underreal has a little bit different coating here and as you may notice the bottom of the reflector also changed the geometry and that's why the newer version has slightly larger throw but apart from that the output is the same the driver is the same the UI is, is different obviously but also the reflector change so bear this in mind that uh, the Unreal version the newer version has slightly uh, more throw but we are talking about 40 or, or 50 meters more so this is not a huge uh, distance but you'll see on the beam shots that it also has slightly uh, more focused hotspot that's obviously understandable judging that the output is the same so let me just uh, go through the UI real quick so let's just focus on the Unreal version here because this is uh, this is very simple and probably you'll get this one because this is newer one so one click for on one click for off uh, obviously hold the switch from off to enter the lowest mode uh, when the flashlight is on hold the switch to increase or decrease the brightness then obviously double tap for the turbo mode from on and from off if you double tap you go to the max ramp mode first and then double tap again to go into turbo mode okay uh, this is basic basic operation uh, obviously you can check the voltage of the batteries by triple clicking one two three one two three four point one so four point one volts uh, and then if you want to examine more advanced user interface and all the functions please check the unreal tutorial that i've made on the channel right there in the top right corner okay so let's just look at the runtime rush real quick this is the turbo output comparison between the narsil m and uh unreal so first let's go through the narsil m real quick i measured around 19,128 lumens at startup the rest was calculated based on the lux meter measurements uh, and uh, here as you can see we've got over 1 minute and 21 seconds of turbo output before it steps down from over 17,000 lumens and the flashlight was set to around 70 degrees celsius thermal step down obviously so the next 70 seconds it stepped down to around 1667 lumens level and then gradually decrease the brightness over the course of the next like four hours but i only measured around two hours because the uh, output already uh, was below the 10 percent of the initial output okay so very nice result 69 degrees achieved after the stabilization and around 1500 lumens uh, and then obviously uh, 
you can see on the runtime graphs. Uh, and uh, the Unreal version I measured slightly more because 19,640 lumens at start. Uh, just individual differences between the flashlights, obviously different LEDs and uh, the time produced. But uh, here it actually uh, sustained the output for 1 minute and 31 seconds, so 10 seconds more, uh, but also stepped down from lower level, which is 15,833 lumens, uh, also set to 70 degrees Celsius thermal step down, and after 60 seconds it was uh, at the level of 2,151 lumens, so slightly higher than Narsil, but as you can see here, uh, it is far less stable in terms of the light output than the Norzil version, so uh, obviously a little bit of different algorithm here and uh, Unreal also it uh, ran a little bit colder in terms of uh, temperature, so 65 degrees and not 69 like Narsil version. Uh, and uh, the runtime is also quite significantly uh, decreased. So 1 hour and 35 minutes and then the, the output is, is flat, but Narsil tends to uh, increase the, the runtime more rapidly and uh, the batteries were identical, okay? And now the max ramp comparison. Here is a huge difference between Narsil and Unreal version. Uh, so these are factory settings. I didn't change anything in terms of max ramp levels. So the Narsil M I measured around 8,410 lumens at start, and then we've gone the step down after precisely precisely 4 minutes and 24 seconds from around 7,400 lumens. Uh, again, 70 degrees Celsius thermal step down. After 70 seconds, we've got 1000 lumens and uh, 1070 lumens, uh, and then a uh, gradual decrease of brightness over the course of the next four hours, uh, 73 degrees of the body. But Unreal here is much more light coming out than Max Ramp, so around 14 and a half thousand lumens at start, and then precise after two minutes, we've got 11,780 lumens, and after 60 seconds, uh, it stepped down to around 2680 lumens uh, and then uh, obviously it fluctuated fluctuated around 2000 lumens uh, and then after 1 hour and 40 minutes uh, it actually steps down to a very very low level and then remains the uh, constant uh, lumen level so here is 65 degrees a little warmer than Narsil but as you can see the here the difference is huge okay so let's go to the forest and show you the Beamshot comparison between the Narsil version and the Unreal version of the Lumentop GT3. Let's go! This is the Lumentop GT3 Narsil M version. Let's just jump straight to the max ramp. Notice the hotspot diameter here on the valley. And this is the turbo mode amazing output for a flashlight this size simply astonishing holy nice and steady output until the temperature is achieved but look at the hotspot here quite big actually but still plenty of side light here very nice light distribution I like that one very universal pattern and still quite froey on an open space but on a closed valley like this same situation now same scenario but the Unreal version notice the spot diameter here definitely can see the difference and now the turbo output quite frankly I can see much more focused hotspot here but still plenty of highlight as you can see so similar light distribution except the hotspot uh, so we get an extra meters of throw but other than that pretty similar so this is the max ramp and the true mode it's only a a little increase in brightness. I don't know why Max Ramp is set that way, but uh, Narsil M has much more user-friendly setting 
uh, 50% brightness max ramp and 100% turbo here is like 90% max ramp and 100% turbo mode. A little bit weird, but it is as it is, you can always configure that one. So that's very nice. GT3 Anduril versus Narsil. GT3 versus X50. Alright, summing up, uh, whether you would choose the Narzil version or the Unreal version, I'm sure the GT3 won't disappoint me in any matter. Uh, I mean the turbo output is just amazing, astonishing and uh, leaving you speechless while you double tap the button. Uh, obviously you'll probably get the Unreal version because it's, it's more widely available than Narzil nowadays, but uh, if you're lucky enough to get the Narzil version, then basically you've got uh, one key advantage and that is you can uh, disable the step down and the thermal regulation at all but I wouldn't advise that because uh, this flashlight gets hot extremely fast and uh, during my tests I was able to heat it up to 115 degrees celsius so <laughs> it was uh, very dangerous and please don't try this at home so basically uh, I advise to go as high as 70 degrees but no more because uh, even then with gloves you can definitely feel the heat on your hand and it might get uncomfortable or even hurt you. So basically uh, for a little bit more throw and focused beam let's go for the Unreal version and obviously it has uh, more advanced UI, more funny modes and also the ramping works a little bit different uh, than the Narsil version but the Narsil version is still good. For that kind of flashlight, uh, I think this is uh, as good as the uh, later Unreal version and with blue bezel and identical looks, uh, I beg to differ that uh, there is almost no difference here, okay? So I think I showed you all the key differences, whether you like the Narsil version or the Unreal version, I'm sure you won't go wrong with these GT3 models. I'm amazed with this one, especially with this size and power, it can uh, actually put a shame some more advanced and premium constructions uh, in terms of light output and sustainable turbo mode. So guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button, if hit the subscribe button if you did. And if you would, would like to see more videos on this channel, uh, stay safe, leave a comment if you have any questions. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.